Hi, I'm Genevieve from Lewis Visuals. The first stage of any project is to establish and define the brief. It's not just what you want to do, it's also what you'll be allowed to do, bearing in mind the many restraints and constrictions on property modification these days. So to begin with, I'd like you to give me an hour of your time at a free meeting to outline roughly what you would like. It's a free consultation and to make the most of it, you need to do three things first. One, fill in the project inquiry questionnaire. We'll send this to you. Two, send me a couple of photos of the front and rear of your property. Pictures from your phone will be absolutely fine. Three, dig out any old plans or drawings that you may have. For example, estate agent plans are ideal. Now with all that information, I'll be able to do some sketches for you there and then with you right there to help me and guide me. Without it, you really won't be making the most of our free hour together. So having said that, let me run through some of the gritty details for you. I'll be considering how your spaces are best positioned for approach, light, orientation and circulation. For instance, if the sun rises in the east, so where will you be in the house in the morning? And the same consideration applies for the south at midday and the west in the evening. We wouldn't want, for instance, to be providing you with a WC that is south facing, which will be taking up the main garden views and especially if it has a rabbit warren of corridors just to get you there. Budget is the main driving factor. We have a very helpful bill cost calculator on our website, which multiplies your new floor area by around 1,200 to 1,500 pounds per square meter. Attic conversions are generally a fixed price depending on the size and internal alterations can vary greatly. We will be able to gauge if your budget and brief are realistic and if they're not, then we may have to establish if there's any room for movement or compromise in either. The other main considerations when designing is planning permission. There are many other factors to planning which are dependent on your location and previous planning consents. These may limit your percentage increase of your original dwelling as it stood before 1948, or you may even have had your permitted development rights revoked. Also do check your deeds to see if you have any covenants that may restrict you. But do not fear though, as in most cases, we can usually overcome any obstacles you may have and tailor your brief to suit. In 2012, the government introduced the MPPF. This is the National Planning Policy Framework. This is an easy to read, 48 page document, which leans towards the presumption in favor of sustainable development and encouraging the economy. Wherever necessary, we would reference this document. Finally, we come to your permitted development rights. In many cases, there are parts of your home that you can extend, convert, construct without planning permission. Again, the extent of your allowances are limited to your location, what is classed as original, that's pre-1948, and whether you're attached or detached. Our website linked to the planning portal has a very handy mini guide to permitted development. This includes single storey, two storey, attic conversions, porches and outbuildings. So, at the end of our meeting, I should be able to give you a refined design brief, some sketches and a budget for other consultants' fees and our fees. This is Genevieve from Lewis Visuals. I hope you join us for stage two, the As Existing Survey.